On this week's episode we look at the Zastone M7, a dual band radio that operates on VHF between 136 and 174 MHz and 400 to 480 MHz in the UHF band. It has a capacity to hold 250 memory channels and purports to have an output power of 8 watts but we'll put this to the test a little bit later on in the video. As you can see from the radio, it's quite a well-made unit um, with a, a rather large L, sort of lensed LED on the top there. A SMA mail connector, as is the fashion these days. And as I said, it claims to output a power of 8 watts. It has this sort of very nicely moulded sort of magnesium looking, gold looking backplate. Uh, which seems uh, fairly well formed and overall the fitting is a radio of very good quality it supports the standard Kenwood type microphone and earpiece interface which also doubles as the programming port for the radio it has two programmable side buttons which you can configure in software to do various things the main PTT and the, uh, the, the lamp switch on the top the battery here purports to be 2.6 amp per hour. I've not tested its capacity, but I've no reason to believe it isn't. And the standard battery terminals on the back. Now this battery slides and clips into place nice and firm. And it's a really nice fit. I have to say I, I was impressed with how snug it fits around the top here, exposing the battery clip. The, um, the charger is your standard fare here. Unfortunately, it's not a USB charger as you sometimes see these days. It comes with this uh, rather ugly looking uh, wall wart and, uh, and a fairly brief uh, exploratory manual that's okay. Um, a nice antenna actually, um, nicely moulded and manufactured with a nice finish to it and seems to be fairly effective out in the field. Uh, the radio obviously always comes with a lanyard and your standard belt clip there which is a little bit on the thin side but seems to do the job fairly effectively and I always fit these because I always find uh, clipping the radios to the belt or the trouser pocket useful. So that's unusual isn't it, a little chiming sound. You can change those chiming sounds to different ones if you like uh, with the uh, in, uh, in the menus in the radios or the uh, programming software. Let's just have a little listen to the uh, to the menus. 15, 14, 13. Manual, radio. Transmit power. Beep. End. Bus. Time out timer. Prior transmit channel. Welch level. Bend set. Backlight. As usual, the death adapter came and wouldn't actually fit in the socket. This was so badly bent out of shape, you really should throw these things in the bin and get a proper um, EU certified uh, connector for that, for those. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to where you can get them from. So it took about an hour to charge this up to full uh, from flat, about half full the battery was. Here are the specifications as per the manual. And so we'll pop it onto the power meter and if you haven't seen a review of the Shawcom SW102, have a look on the channel there. A very nice power meter here, coupled with this uh, dummy load that I use now on all my tests. I don't bother using the analog meter at all now. I rely on this because I found it to be very accurate and a very nice meter to use. So there you can see just over 5 watts on UHF, uh, which uh, is shy of 8, but there you go. I was expecting a little bit more on VHF here, to be honest. And we got less, which is unusual. It's normally the other way around. So it was just, just about 4 watts there on VHF, but still more than usable in the field. And as I've already said, a quite nice uh, bright LED on the top of the radio, if this is your thing. I know, and I thought I'd take them into the cupboard to do a little test here. So here we have the M7, which is nice and bright and displays nice and clear. And that lights up as does the keypad um, compared to a UV5R, which again is also fairly bright um, for a small LED. I imagine the LED in the M7 is the same size, but it just has a lens on it. And there you go, you can see the displays in the keypads as they appear in the dark, which uh, I say I do like the display on the uh, on the M7. It, my eyesight isn't perfect, and uh, it really does help uh, me see the screen nice and clear. And uh, I've got now got the programming software, so I've actually got uh, some local repeaters and some splits in. As you'll see here, the, the it's not programmable on Chirp. I had to contact the vendor to get this software 
as it wasn't available on the Zastone website, but I'll put a link to it. It's about 95 megabytes in size. It's very large, and uh, they also bundled a circuit diagram, if anybody's interested, and obviously the manual in PDF format. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you'd like to get hold of the programming software. There are no viruses or bugs in it, as far as I can tell. It all appeared to be clean on my machine, and installed and worked on Windows 10 with no issues whatsoever. I use an FTDI cable for programming. I suspect that most people these days use a prolific one. But uh, I use an FTDI and I had no issues at all. So, as you can see here, the screen is nice and big. You've got the two um, VFOs, top and bottom, the usual affair here. And you've got your selection, your different selections in your menu. Uh, you can. I'm not going to go through these in any detail, but it's, they're nice and big. And they have the audible prompt as well, which is nice and clear. There's a little pop and a crack in between selecting the audio prompt. I'm not sure what that is, but I have actually turned the audio prompt off. I don't need the audio prompt, so I can see very clearly from the screen exactly what I'm doing. So I actually switched the audio prompt off. Now, there is one issue with this radio that others have found, or a couple of little niggles. The DTMF tones I can't seem to get working, which might be an issue if you want to use this radio for Echo Link and the uh, the Roger beep I couldn't get using again something some people like I couldn't get that to function even though it is an option in the menu and the final thing was the 1750 tone I couldn't get that to work either but let's see how this radio performs out on site right we've come out to site with the radios and uh, we're going to try and see how we get back to base we're still working on the internal loft antenna back in base even though I have put an antenna up on the outside of the house now uh, but we're going to for reference purposes we're going to keep the uh, using the antenna inside the loft for now and um, we're going to try both these radios from here and somebody um, asked me what difference does the speaker mic make to the audio so I brought out this little Bafang speaker mic and I thought for a change we would stick this on as well uh, and just uh, just to try it between the two radios um, the weather is a bit rubbish today as you can see um, really it's not too windy today which is good um, but it is a little bit damp so um, We'll see how that affects our progress, but it might affect the signal path a little bit as well, so you need to bear that in mind. So, right, let's crack on with the test and see how these radios perform. All right, it's raining now, typically. This is G7 LNK Mobile testing the Zastone M7 at location A, approximately three miles, uh, without the plug-in mic, 12345, 54321, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is G7 LNK Mobile testing the UV5R, location A, approximately 3 miles, 12345, 54321, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Conditions aren't great, I'll be honest. Back to base, I've just monitored the signal, um, and Mick is actually on frequency, but it's not great, not great signal. So, I'm not expecting great things uh, today, unfortunately, because of the weather. Um, it seems to be hampering things somewhat. Um, so anyway, we'll go to the second location and we'll try the radios and see exactly how we get on there. So next shot, that's where we're going to be. I had to film that. That's a handy place on a Nissan Leaf to store your radio up there. Look. <laughs> anyway, the cable gets in the way there a bit. But anyway, that was Mick. Mick was on the phone and um, he's hopefully going to get himself set up so we can do a bit of a radio to radio test, which we've never done before, I don't think, from this location. So that's going to be quite good. Now the rain is holding off for now, so... I'm going to jump out of the car and do the test and see how we get on because it's not raining and then uh, and then hopefully we'll, if we can do it we'll speak to Mick and get him to record a bit of the audio and if, if we get time we'll stick it in the video. Right we've got rain, cars, all sorts of distractions here but let's try. This is G7 LNK Mobile with the Zastone M7 and location B approximately 7 miles testing 12345 54321 the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is G7 LNK Mobile with the Zastone M7 and location B approximately 7 miles testing 12345 54321 the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 
Right, here's the UV5R for a direct comparison. This is G7 LNK Mobile with the UV5R at location B. 5R at location B, approximately 7 miles. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Right, let's try this. A little bit awkward one handed, but let's give it a go. This is G7 LNK Mobile. Testing. This is G7 LNK Mobile with the UV5R and the external Baofeng mic testing its wind resistance at location B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is G7 LNK Mobile with the UV5R and the external Baofeng mic testing its wind resistance at location B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I need bigger hands and I've got big hands. This is G7 LNK a Mobile with the Zastone M7 and the external Baofeng speaker mic. Probably a bit too close to the antenna. It's probably got a bit of a buzz on it right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is G7 LNK a Mobile with the Zastone M7 and the external Baofeng speaker mic. Probably a bit too close to the antenna. Probably got a bit of a buzz on it right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Right, I'm sat in the car and Mick is on frequency. He noticed uh, we've got like a family tracking app and uh, he noticed I was out on site here. So um, let's see if we can raise him from the dead uh, without getting out of the car and then we'll try getting out of the car. It's just I don't want to get soaked. So let's give it a go. Uh, G7 LNK Mobile G0 LDB, you monitoring? Somebody else mentioned that the audio was a bit low on my handout, so um <laughs> This is G zero L D B to G seven L N K. Uh recording a video this time. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Paul. G7LNK mobile with the Zastone M7 testing radio to radio with G0LDB. Uh, we're doing a quick radio check, quick audio check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's always a car passing. Uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. How does that sound now, Mick? Yeah, that sounded perfect. Yeah, that sounded perfect. Coming through on the handout. Okay, I'm going to get back in the car because I'm getting wet. I'll speak to you in a second on the radio. Stay on frequency. There's got to be a mic gain inside that uh, that radio somewhere. This is Mick on the ICE 92. That's, so that's a bit of a difference. Get the manual out, as I say. Read the manual. Well, I won't put the other word in that they, well, Fuller used to put in. <laughs> yeah, I'm recording you now because that, that makes such a difference. Um, the yeah, you literally night and day. That is, you're absolutely booming in now. Right, I'm on the high power mode as well. It's uh, I forget what these put out. They're about, they're only about five watts though, aren't they? These are uh, ninety two Ds. So uh, yeah, I'm surprised. I can tell by your voice that you're pleased with the signal you're receiving at the moment. So that is good. Yeah, it's really a good signal, Mick. Um, really, really nice and clear. Uh, the audio coming through on the M7 sounds good, but that, that ICOM is just the, the bee's knees, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. Uh, they are the absolute bee's knees. And, um, yeah, this is this is sounding really, really good. Um, the difference was massive. I think it's just a setting on the Yaesu. I think that's all we're looking at there, just a setting. And I think you could get that up to somewhere close to the ICOM. But, yeah, yeah, that's a massive difference. It's like you're in the car, Mick. All right, we've clipped the radar, but we're going to try and do a, a mobile test. A mobile test with Mick. Uh, he's back at base. We'll try and do a little mobile test while I'm driving along here. So uh, let's give that a try. All right, G7LNK mobile. 
Now, moving off. How are you, Mick? Can you receive me okay? Okay, this is G7LNK Mobile with G0LDB doing a test with the Zastone M7 radio up on high ground just outside of Farthingo near Banbury, North Oxfordshire. Doing a test with the Zastone M7 radio up on high ground just outside of Farthingo near Banbury, North Oxfordshire. Yep, G0LDB returning. Yeah, okay, Paul. Uh, nice audio coming through. It seems to be working fine. Hope mine's going the same your way. So uh, we've proved that we did. I I have got a problem with the Yasu radio. So and this icon is uh, letting me through fine. So it's giving me a good signal, and I'm getting a good signal from you as well. G seven L and K from G zero L D B. I'm just spinning the car around Mick, I'm a little bit, you're a little bit scratchy with me because uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, my antenna isn't in the best position here, go ahead. raining again never mind okay I hopefully that was a successful test the Zastone M7 um, I really like the look of this thing um, I don't know what you guys think but it's it, it feels a really good for 30 pounds this was delivered uh, it feels a really nice radio for the money uh, and um, okay performance wise it's probably up there with the UV 68D because I think it's actually using similar componentry inside it's very very similar and um, both good radios, but of course this is a lot cheaper than the 68D. Um, in terms of um, the menus, there's lots about it that I like that I've already explained in the in the video. Uh, the big screen in particular with my eyesight being a bit older, um, it's not perfect. So the, the larger font and text is much easier for me to read. Um, the audible prompts are something there for people that really have problems with their eyesight and they're nice and clear. Although there are little issues with little pops and cracks when you jump between the menus. Um, in terms of programming this, I've had to ask the supplier for uh, a cable. Uh, sorry, a, a, a cable. I've had to ask the supplier for the software. I've already got a cable. Uh, it's not on the Zastone website. The radio doesn't even feature on the Zastone website at the moment. Um, so I'm just waiting for that to come. There are... There are, there are um, YouTube videos which show you the programming of this radio so I'm not going to go into great detail like I say there's a slight issue with the DTMF tones the Roger beep and the 1750 tone but if they're not a problem then it's not a problem um, I think for 30 pounds you'll be hard-pressed to find a better value radio in terms of build quality features and looks I think it's a really nice looking radio so um, yeah, I'd go for one while you still can. Um, the um, re recent worldwide problems are causing a little bit few issues with supplies and things, so I'm not going to leave a link for this radio. Just have a look in the usual places if you are interested. Um, when I get the software, I will leave a link to the software, and when I get two minutes, I'll scan the manual in and I'll leave a link to that as well, although it's not the best manual. You're better off just playing around with the radio and seeing what you can do yourself. If you have been, thank you ever so much for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. I've now gone over 6,000 subscribers, and that's all because of you guys. So thanks ever so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care.